there's going to come a day, and it's not going to be too far away, whenever the world will be ruled by the Word of God, by men of God, and this place is going to be heaven on earth from time immemorial. Break it down because some people might be hearing that for the first time, okay? okay? The second coming and the rapture, two different things. Yes. Explain, please, sir. The rapture of the church is when Jesus comes for his church. The second coming is when Jesus comes with his church. Got it. The rapture of the church happens when he appears in the clouds of heaven. He does not come to earth. We go up to meet him. The, the dead in Christ rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be instantly caught up to be with the Lord in the air, and we go to heaven. The first thing that happens is the judgment seat of Christ. Paul said we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the deeds that have been done in our body, whether they are good or whether they are bad. Our works are going to be tried by fire so that our lives in its essence will be given purity as we enter our eternal life. Every person is going to stand here. People say, well, uh, you, you're already in heaven. It's not a matter of if you're going to be in heaven or not. It's a matter that you are going to give an account to God for what you have done and what you fail to do. The, the gap that exists between what you could have been and not were not because you did not use the opportunities God blessed you. You are still going to be in heaven, but you are going to receive a reward in heaven based on what you did on this earth, where there are going to be five different crowns that you can receive. You'll receive a white robe, and we are going to receive the mansions. We are going to be there for a period of seven years, and there will be the marriage supper of the Lamb. While we're in heaven seven years, there will appear on this earth the Antichrist, and he's going to set up a government of ten, ten men who will lead groups of nations that will be complete dictators on the face of the earth. Every commercial exchange will be recorded. You cannot do anything without his permission. He will start out making a treaty with the state of Israel that's for seven years. He will break that treaty in three and a half years. In this seven-year period, there will be six seals, six, uh, seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials, 21 supernatural acts of judgment that are coming on this earth. Just one of those acts will be whenever angels are released to destroy a third of the earth's population in a day. What's going to happen on this earth will be hell on earth. Wow. And we, the bride of Christ, are going to be in heaven. People teaching that we are going to go through that just simply or biblically misinformed. We are members of the bride of Christ. Jesus is the blessed hope. And there's nothing hopeful about living through seven years of hell to prove that you love Jesus. The Lord is going to take us to heaven. We're going to miss this chaos, and that's going to happen on the earth. And then Jesus Christ is going to return at the end of seven years. Those seven years will be seven times 360 because that's a prophetic year. If you can tell me the day the Antichrist will sign that treaty, I can tell you to the day that Jesus Christ will come back. We are going to come back. All of the Old Testament saints, the New Testament saints, all the angels of God, and we are going to, there will be a destruction at the Battle of Armageddon of those who have come against the city of Jerusalem. Then there will be a 75-day gap. Now, I know every preacher listening to this is sliding to the edge of his couch saying, where in the name of God is he getting this? This is in the book of Daniel, and it takes me several pages to mathematically and scriptorially validate it, but I assure you it's as true as John 3.16. There'll be a 75-day uh, gap wherever when Jesus comes back, 
there will be the judgment of the nations. That's Matthew 25. There's some call it the sheep and goat judgment. But the essence of that judgment is, how did you treat the Jewish people? Hmm. How did you treat the nation of Israel? Jesus said, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't bring water to me. When I was in prison, you didn't come see me. He's describing many things that happened in the Holocaust. And they said, when did we see you that? And he said, inasmuch as you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. My brethren were the Jewish people, certainly were not Gentiles. At this point in time, before the cross, we were nothing. Paul said we were outside the covenants of Israel, without God, without hope of all men most miserable. Until the cross of Jesus Christ, we were not adopted. We were pagans outside the sovereignty of God. I have heard theologians say Abraham was a Christian before his time, and you just want to pull his hair out. It's just absolutely not true. And whenever uh, that judgment is over, I believe that there will be a, a period of time where your divine assignment is going to be given. God said, if you suffer with me, you're going to reign with me. And this is the only place in the prophetic flow where this fits, because God is going to place righteous leadership over every nation, over every state, over every city. When that, whenever the, whenever the eternal kingdom is established, every place on this planet is going to be sovereignly led by Jesus Christ, the word of God, and righteous people. And then he's going to set up his kingdom. The, the new Jerusalem from God is going to settle down over the city of Jerusalem. And it's going to be 1,500 miles square. Many people say, oh, how can, how can if Jerusalem is the capital of the earth and they feature what it's going to be today? No, it's going to be 1,500 miles square and 1,500 miles high. I know that's a mind stretcher, but take it up with the prophets. They're the one that said that. And then... Uh, Jesus is going to rule the earth. Uh, it, is a, it is a theological dynasty. And I know that uh, the people who are not Christians and the people who are liberal left, just the hair on the back of their head stands up when you say that. But there's going to come a day, and it's not going to be too far away. Whenever the world will be ruled by the word of God, by men of God, and this place is going to be heaven on earth from time immemorial. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.